Hey, what up? It's your girl, Octavia. Um, today we're looking at APT40. Um, before we get started, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And special thanks to our sponsor, uh, this little cutie pie right here on the right. So today we're looking at APT40 activity in educational institutions. Now, APT40 has been active since at least 2009. As we know, they target a wide range of verticals, including government organizations, defense and maritime contractors, and education institutions, as we'll see shortly. So in particular, um, what we're going to look at today is their use of malware that performs process injection and um, code execution using native API calls. And these are important primarily for stealth. Um, if we're just running shell commands, you know, that's not great. Um, they're easily detected and heavily signatured by, you know, most AVs and EDR. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to get detected easily. Um, so, for this release, um, our process injection will use a sliver agent. Um, we have a sliver plugin now in operator that you can install for free. Um, get that set up and use the uh, native API functions that, that sliver includes. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the chain. Um, now we already have the sliver agent active here. Um, so we can load our chain and just run it. Search for APT40 uh, education institutions. <clears throat> now our lab setup is pretty simple. This is just a uh, Windows 11 VM. We don't have any need for a domain or anything like that. So once you have that set up, install your server agent, um, start it, and you can basically just run this chain. Um, the chain uses some facts for process IDs, um, but they are collected as we step through each of these. So there's no additional configuration you need to worry about. Um, in case you're not aware or you haven't done it before, documentation for Sliver is available here. Just search Sliver plugin in the docs and you can see the installation instructions. And the steps are basically this, um, install and run the Sliver server. Once it's up and running, um, it'll drop certificates in your home folder. <clears throat> Copy those over to the uh, appropriate operator configuration folder. And then uh, force reload or reload operator up here under view on a Mac and you're good to go. Then you just need to generate your payload and run it. Okay, so let's run the chain. Hit deploy. And we see some stuff happening over here on the right. Um, if you noticed, calculator popped up and notepad popped up pretty quickly, and then they quit. And here we have the results of our execution. As you can see, it was all successful. So let's kind of step through what's actually happening here. Um, first, what we're doing is we're starting a sacrificial process. So for the shellcode injection, we need a target that we'll be injecting into. So we first spawn a, a uh, notepad process so that we have a known um, PID that we can use. And then we inject in the next step, we inject our shell code into that process. When the uh, injection completes, the process is killed and uh, we should have you know, a new process or a new thread running with whatever is contained in our shell code. Now, in our case, it's actually just a calculator that quickly popped up here and then was killed. Um, and we'll see why in a second. So, Next, we grab the process ID for that calculator um, application. We're going to use that in a moment. And then we're demonstrating um, some of the native API functions that Slipper provides. Now, what's kind of new here and will be interesting to, to you folks is that 
um, each of these each of these native API um, TTPs has its own unique executor. So for example, um, create registry key. Let's take a look at that. Create registry key. We can see here that under platforms um, on Windows systems, we're actually using the registry Key, registry, registry create key executor to uh, perform this command, which takes some set of arguments needed to, to satisfy this executor. Each of these is doing something similar. Um, so behind the scenes, um, Sliver is making those, making those calls directly. Okay, so continuing through the chain, uh, set up the registry key. We can read a registry key, delete a registry key. It's all pretty straightforward. And then some discovery techniques like listing uh, files in a directory and getting network configuration information. You know, if we open this up, we can see we've collected our interfaces and the IP addresses uh, that we're using. Same for our print working directory, um, listing, running processes, all this stuff should be super familiar. And then terminating a process, um, we're actually killing the calculator process that we, we spawned using the inject shell code. So we're, we're cleaning up after our uh, cleaning up a process after it's it's done some work and we no longer want it. Um, Netstat also native API calls rather than using like Bash or whatever. Um, getting the agent privilege so we can see. Um, the context in which this agent is running. <clears throat> Make durs, self-explanatory, and then uh, RM, the read files. So that's it, um, each of the steps of the chain. Going a little bit deeper, um, what's really happening behind the scenes? We'll just pick one of these and use it as an example. And I think execute shellcode is, is probably going to be um, the most like interesting for many of you. If we look at the TTP, <coughs> uh, we will see. As with the uh, create re registry key example, we also have a execute shell code um, executor. And this executor is, is really injecting the attached payload here. So I have win x64 calc. This is just um, a shellcode command to pop calculator. And the uh, target process that we want to inject into. So how does Sliver do this? Um, it's pretty standard like process injection technique. Um, first, it, allocates memory using virtual alloc ex um, to create the buffer. And then write process memory, that's the second uh, Windows API call to actually write the shellcode into the target process memory space. And then finally, uh, create remote thread. Used to, you guessed it, create a remote thread um, where the shellcode is located in the target process. And once that's complete, um, we've actually like performed our execution. Um, so yeah, behind the scenes, direct syscalls or native syscalls um, to do this thing. So that's all I had for you today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed and see you all for the next release. Bye-bye.